This is the Quilt As You Go Chronicles, where mum and I are making an applique quilt together. Last week we made block one and showed you how to do fusible applique and cut the backing squares. This week we'll show you how to quilt the applique blocks, quilt as you go, and how to do free motion sketchy applique. If you'd like to make this quilt with us, you can purchase the patterns on our website. Otherwise, keep watching, there's lots to learn. So mum, do you want to explain to me and everyone at home what machine quilting is for quilt as you go? Okay, so it's easy. Rather than wrestling with a large quilt under mm -hmm. your sewing machine, we're just working in small, manageable size pieces. So it gives you more freedom, basically. Yep, and it's much easier. Cool. And then, so what are we going to use today? Run us through that. So we've got some thread, some needles, a walking foot. What type of thread is this? This is a Rosant thread, mm -hmm. and just so that I don't have tension problems, keeping it really easy, I'm using the same thread on the top as I'm using on the bobbin too. Oh, so you're going to wind a bobbin with that thread? That's right. Cool. Yep. And then we've got titanium needles, size 80. Why is that? Okay, so they don't have to be titanium, just quilting needles. So they're size 80. They're a little bit heavier because we need to sew through the three thicknesses of the quilt sandwich. And that's why we're using the walking foot and to ease it through. That's right. Okay, yep. cool. Yep. Cool. All right, so we are going to be quilting on block one. That's right. So anyone at home, our B's and Z's who did blanket stitching or zigzag, this is yep. what they're going to be doing. That's right. So first of all, you'll need to cut a square of backing fabric. So just cut that in the same way that we did last week and then cut a square of batting. An easy way to do that is to just pop your backing fabric on top of your batting and just cut around the edge of that with scissors. So our three layers are all the same size and that's because we've already allowed extra fabric to for the shrinkage during the quilting and the applique process. So layer them together, make sure that your batting is sitting nice and straight. I always like to make sure that my straight grains are all running in the same direction. So the straight grain is that edge that you pull on and is quite solid. The across grain's got a little bit of stretch in it. So make sure that our solid grain is all running in the same direction. Make sure everything is really nice and smooth pop some pins in around the edge and a couple of pins in the middle and we're ready to start quilting. So I like to start and finish my quilting with six or seven small stitches and I find that that's really secure and you can just snip the threads off. Mm -hmm. But some people like to keep their threads long and then do the bedding. Mm -hmm. um, that's really great too. So just do what works for you. So here's a little trick for doing the six or seven small stitches. If you have a sewing machine that has a memory, most computerized machines do. First of all, you can just choose one stitch like that and then I'm going to bring that one down to my 0.4 so that's my tiny stitch and then what I do from there is I press memory. Now I'll go over to my next stitch, oops just go um, close and then I'll go to my next stitch which is that one and I always like to quilt with a length of three so it's a little bit bigger and it helps to evenly move through the fabric so then I'll once again go memory and close. So now when I go between the stitches that's my starting one on 0 0.4 and that's my quilting one on, whoops, three. That's a really good tip because you're not going do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> It is a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you can find your machine manual online. All you need to do is just type in your machine model into Google and you can download the PDF of it. Really simple. That's right. And see if you've got a memory. Maybe you can do that little tip that I did. Exactly. So how do we get started? What do we do? Okay. So this is how you start and finish. To avoid those thread clumps on the back when you start and finish, it's a good idea to bring your bobbin thread up to the top. So to do that, put your foot down, press your needle down button, press it again, and that will bring the thread up with it. I like to use some tweezers to help pull that through because I have thread cutters. And if you don't have a needle up down button, just turn the wheel on the side. Okay, so pop the needle down and I just like to put that behind the foot, foot down. I'm already on my 0.4 stitch length and I'm going to do six or seven small stitches to start with. And then I switch over to my stitch length of three and I can quilt, making sure that my walking foot is behaving itself and everything's going nice. And then I'll finish off with those small stitches again. And then you can cut your threads. I have thread cutters, so I'm just going to cut. And it's a good idea now to have a look 
How's that looking? Looks quite nice. And double check on the back to make sure that your tension is good and you're right to start quilting. To quilt block one, all we're going to do is just outline the applique shape, sewing nice and close to the edge. And so you're just going to try and sew in one continuous thing so you don't have to stop and start over and over again. That's right. Sometimes you will have to, but try um, to do that as little as possible. Ah, oh, that's why mum asked me to design the blocks and fill up everything. That's exactly right. So <laughs> when you fill these blocks, that's all the quilting has to be. So just really simple. Really simple. And we're just holding it together. That's exactly right. right. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Off now. Oh wow, so because the thread's the same colour you can barely see it so you don't really have to stress that much. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I sometimes used to use invisible thread when I was teaching sewing classes and it was quite funny. People didn't really like it. Some people did but they didn't, other people didn't because they couldn't see it. It was invisible. <laughs> it's invisible. <laughs> that's right. So I've now just gone to using the background colour thread and I find that it's just so much easier. It's kind of with. cool because it kind of puffs up the shape a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so like this, it, a bit more. it does. Yeah, the outline quilting really does puff that up. A bit more dimensions and stuff. Yep, just taking pins out if they're in the way. Yep. yep. And what's, um, do you have a quilt that you've made that, I don't know, it was just really fun to quilt? Yeah, my favourite quilt is a Twilight Dreaming quilt. Oh. And I love that one because it was the start of the pandemic and um, it was our first... We didn't love the pandemic, but... No, we didn't love that. <laughs> um, but it, it sort of pushed us to make YouTube videos. And yeah, it's when we, we started learning how to make videos and it was a lot of fun. It was the first quilt that we designed together. So oh, you yeah. did all the designing, I did all the techniques and... Um, I loved it. It's got some really special memories. Yeah, we made so many friends as well. We online, did, we did. Nice. Yeah, it's what started um, all of this for us. Hey, so do you want to turn? All right. Come I'll on. Have a go. Yeah, it's okay. fun. Swap you. <laughs> so I'm just outlining around the shapes. That's what you're doing. And you've already yeah. done the setup for yep, me. Yep, yep. And put this, slow this Speed down. Control down. <laughs> all right, let's go. Okay, so I've just gotten to here. Do I just come in a, come around that now? Like Yeah, you do. Yep, just so. outline the leaf. Oh, like that. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, no, I went out. Doesn't matter. No one's going to see it. Just kind of blend it back in again. It's crazy. <laughs> oh, this is actually... Oh, it's not that bad. I'm being nervous. Just take, take your time. Slow, yeah. And then just... Okay. I get it now. That's right. <laughs> and you don't have to go fast. So you go around a curve. That's it. Stop. Pivot. Couple of stitches. Yep. Keep pivoting. Well done. That's it. You're doing it. I'm quilting. You're quilting. That's great. I think I'm sewn the wrong way. No, you're going great. Oh, cool. Yeah, right. as long as you're outlining the shape, it doesn't matter. You're going really good. So for anyone quilting along with us at home, our B's and Z's, you can go ahead and quilt your applique blocks just like this. It's actually really therapeutic. It's so therapeutic, isn't it? But I've done the dodgiest job. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine. All right, okay. let's look at the back, shall we? Yeah. All right, moment of truth. <laughs> look at that, see, it just looks really nice and neat and there's no tension problems and no little thread clumps in sight anywhere. You can barely see where I went a bit rogue as well. That's right. Oh. Hey? Hey. Pretty good. I'll make a quilter out of you yet. <laughs> <laughs> Mum's dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> I want you to teach me to sew clothes though. Yes, I want to do that too. Maybe next series. <laughs> Are we wearing matching colours today? Yeah, you copied off me. No, you copied off me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so, we got a lot of sewing to do. We really do. So you may remember last week where I said that I was going to try a sketchy applique for the first time. Yeah. And so that's what we're going to do today. And that's right. I really love sketchy applique. Mum uses it a lot in many of her quilts and I think it's one of your strongest talents. So I was like, please do it in this quilt. We're doing it. So mum, tell us a bit about sketchy applique. Okay, so it's a free motion sewing technique where you drop the feed dogs and you put on a darning or stipple foot. And it's just like free motion quilting, only mm -hmm. you're doing this on applique shapes where you are sketching around the outside edge three or four times and mm -hmm. then sketching in the detail. Nice, nice. Yeah. And so what do we need to do this technique? Okay, so you just need to be able to drop the feed dogs on your sewing mm -hmm. machine. You need a stippling foot. If you have one that's open in the front, mm -hmm. that is probably better because you can easily see where you're going. Mm -hmm. um, and what else do you need? Um, size 80 top stitch needle, <laughs> <laughs> threads, and some quilting gloves. Awesome, so we've got an assortment of threads here. So what kind yep. of threads are we gonna use for this method? So I'm going to use the Wonderfill Polyfast, it's called. I went on a little bit of a search for threads this weekend mm -hmm. because I, at this I thought I was going to use matching colored threads and then I thought that's too much changing. I just mm -hmm. want to keep with the one thread. Mm -hmm. And I want it to stand out, but I didn't want it to be like as harsh as black. Yeah. So I tried a few different threads and I've come up with this greeny gray color mm -hmm. because I find that it blends in, stands out. It kind of like mm -hmm. does everything. It does it all. It does it all. That's it's a right. wonder thread. So I take that back. It is not a wonder thread. After doing sketchy applique all night because I ended up getting very obsessed with it, um, I just decided that the greeny color looked flat and I didn't like it and I thought I want to do this quilt right and make it look really pretty and how I want it to be. So we're going back to good old Gudeman threads. Been using them for years. I really like them. They are polyester, but they go well through the machine. Uh, we're going to be using like a raspberry color on all the reds, pinks and everything. And then greens on all the leaves and then a goldy color for all the goldy yellowy parts. However, I can't show you how it's going to look because our machine last night, she died. Poor thing. I've had her for about 10 years. Um, so yeah, we can't show you. So we'll have to show you next week and go get a new machine. But anyway, back to the video. <laughs> so mm -hmm. some people do like to use cotton threads. So mm -hmm. there's lots of different brands of cotton threads. Most of them for quilting are a 40 weight. So that's mm -hmm. just a that little bit heavier than a 50 weight, which is your normal thread. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use a polyester thread, um, you can use polyester if you like. Um, test it. So I always just get a strand and I just kind of iron the end of it with the tip of the iron. <laughs> to make sure that it doesn't melt. Yep, awesome, yep. awesome. And then I can see your quilting gloves, you've done a little bit of modification here. <laughs> <laughs> I did, so the idea of quilting gloves is that they have the rubber grips on the end. Yeah. And it just means that that's going to grip the fabric while you're moving it around. So you can get gardening gloves if you want to, mm -hmm. go down to the supermarket and find something there or go to your quilting store and find some quilting gloves. And if you're game, what you can do <laughs> is you can actually cut off the thumb and the pointer finger and do that on both of your gloves because <laughs> this is the same as with our quilting that we showed before we're going to always bring the bobbin thread to the top when we go to sew yep. and this just means that you can use your fingers and you don't have to take <laughs> your, your gloves off <laughs> every time you start <laughs> no. that's a good idea yes, that's a great idea yeah, yeah i love it all right well let's see show me how it's done so what have we got here mum this is our sample block mm-hmm <laughs> <laughs> Cool. <laughs> so this is our sample block that we're going to do some practicing on. Okay, cool. So is there enough fabric for everyone who's following along to make a sample block and try sketchy applique? There is. So if you've okay. got your two blocks ready for block one and you're tempted to give it a go, mm -hmm. give it a go because if it doesn't work, you can make that into a cushion and you'll have enough fabric to make another block one. Awesome. Yep. All right. And so... You went a little bit rogue in the beginning here, I can see. <laughs> I did because I haven't done this technique for a while and it really does take, it, you know, you've got to kind of get into the flow of it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then. Which I did. I started yeah. going really well there. Yeah. All right. So yep. let's see how it's done. Yep. <laughs> Bring the bobbin thread up to the top. If you have thread cutters, just use tweezers to help pull that thread through and then the needle back down again. 
Now make sure your foot is always in the down position and you'll see that there'll be a little bit of space for you to be able to move around. And you start with a couple of small stitches close together. Once those stitches have caught and it's anchored, we're going to sew just half the heart first of all. So make a hand frame. We do the hand frame to make sure that you don't stitch through your fingers. You have to be really careful to keep your fingers out of the way. And I'm just gonna show you how I will sew this heart. Notice how I just did half of the heart because with Sketchy Applique you work in small sections and you're not sewing as fast as what you would do if you were free motion quilting a quilt and three times and those lines don't have to be crossing over each other or exactly on top of each other just like this. Just for some fun on the heart, I'm going to finish with a little bit of a spiral. And then you just finish with some small stitches close together and you can cut the thread away. I don't know if I'll do those little spirals. I kind of just did that at the spur of the moment. So what do you think of that? Yeah, it looks pretty cool. It looks good. But how would I do like a long bit? Because I don't think I could sew all the way up that and keep it nice. That's right. So you work in small sections. So it's like the one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then when you get to a leaf, you can just divert across and stitch a leaf and stitch in some of the inner vein detail mm -hmm. of the leaves and um, and just keep working your way around the stem mm -hmm. like that. So the whole point is to try to minimize stopping and starting. That's small right. sections, three at a time is kind of the magic number. It is, You can yeah. be a bit messy. That's right. Enjoy it. You can. Everybody's going to have their own style and everyone needs to realise that there's no perfection when it comes to sketchy applique. Mm -hmm. It's an artistic form of sewing. As I said, you're using the pencil as a needle. The pencil no. as a needle? You're using, <laughs> you're using the needle as a pencil. Yes, that's right. Sketching around. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> So should I have a go? Swap, swap, swap. Gloves. You can do it. Yay. <laughs> I've always wanted to try this. Yeah. Okay. Making my hand frame. Make the hand frame. That's it. That's it, yeah. So once, you, once you've been backwards, forwards, backwards, I've, I've, got, I've done too many. But anyway, you can stop, reposition your hands. Mm -hmm. But your hand frame, get that real frame there and there, okay? Fingers mm -hmm. away from the needle and that nice hand frame. Away nice. you go. Yeah, let's yep. do it. A bit dodgy. No, that's good. You're a bit of a natural. And that's it. So you can spin it so that the work is going in the direction that you want to sew. Remember, so just stopping That's little right. sections to begin with. Little sections at a time, yep. Now I'm going to jump on and do this leaf. That's right. No, yep, you're right. Are you just getting... I'm just getting closer. Getting closer. All right, here we go, here we go. Ah! <laughs> I went crazy. That's all right. And that's good. So what you're doing there, instead of doing the whole side of the leaf, you're breaking that up into the smaller sections. Oh, I went really crazy there. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, this is your first go and you're doing quite well. My first ever. Yep. 
I just feel like I gotta do it fast for camera. I'm like, oh. No, that's it. You just, just relax. And see, it's a little bit different to free motion sewing where you have to just keep your work, you know, upright all the time. So this, you can actually rotate and move the work so that you can see where you're sewing. That's me. You've actually done really well. Thanks. This is the new me. <laughs> mm. the, the new you, the new sketchy applique. So just little sections and then you little just... Little sections at a time. Oops. And if you like miss the edge, that's okay. Just make sure that you've got three goes. Make sure that at least one of them catches the edge. <laughs> you got three times. <laughs> yeah. All right, moment of truth. Should we look at the back? Yeah, let's check it out. There we go. Wow, it looks really good on the back. It's like a pretty picture itself. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> yeah, the quilt's yeah. reversible now. <laughs> oh, a little bit. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Are we going to go work on our next two blocks? We are, and um, get our sketchy applique done mm -hmm. and get our next two blocks done. Mm -hmm. So we will be up to date with the course. Awesome. And one other thing I just wanted to talk about is that sometimes people ask me if there is fraying involved in sketchy applique. And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Slight fraying is a characteristic of the technique. Mm -hmm. And this week I washed my Lovebirds quilt. That was one of the first, actually it was the second quilt I sketchy applique. Oh. And I did that like over 10 years ago. And you can see just how beautiful it came up. Yeah. And just that little bit of fraying mm -hmm. as it is, that, that, that's part of the, the technique. Part of the aesthetic. It is. That yeah. Is. yeah. So if you're following along at home and making the quilt with us, get sewing on your second blocks. And if you're just following along and enjoying the series, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's Thanks right. for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye.